In this video, I'm gonna teach you all the professional tips and tricks on how to lay down a beautiful, shiny, clear coat finish. This is Paint Society. And thanks for joining me. This is Brian from Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. What does that mean? All the tips and tricks that you learned today, you're gonna to apply on your own, in your own home garage, or in your professional environment. Now we have a 2021 TLX, had some minor damage to the fender. Let me show you exactly how we got to the point where this car is sitting here in the booth, ready to receive a beautiful OEM finish. When the vehicle first entered our shop, you could see that the fender was damaged a little bit too much for a PDR or bodywork repair. So we opted to change the fender out. By doing this, we first need to remove the bumper cover as it had damage as well. When we first get a car into the shop, everything comes off. This is the best way to repair a car, making sure that we do all of our test fits prior to any paint. So we're gonna go ahead and put the fender on and make sure all the alignment, all the gaps, everything's good because this is a time where we need to move anything. We wanna make sure that everything lines up before it is painted so once it is painted everything goes back on the car perfect so we'll detrim the door because we're going to be doing a blend on a door because no color will ever match if we panel paint it we have our new headlight we're going to go do a test fit on that make sure everything lines up you know these are crucial areas between the fender the bumper and the headlight so we want to make sure everything has a nice good looking gap once it all looks very good then we'll take the fender and we're going to seal it i like to put some base and clear on it before this would be cutting in but I actually prefer to paint the whole entire panel ahead of time. It makes for things in the booth to be that much cleaner. We don't have to worry about sealing in the booth and it gives us a good idea if we need to change our color. So put a good coat of clear on. There's no need to go two or three coats. Just one good of clear because this will be sanded down once we put it back on the car. And that's just what we're doing here. We're lining it back up on the car and we're getting the fender ready to blend. And we're going to be blending into the hood and blending into the door right here. We're doing a 800 grit on these panels and once that's all done we'll take some water and some scuff stuff to make sure it's nice and clean and then pull it into the booth so there's a lot of parts that go into the clear coating stage and it starts with the prep the prep needs to be clean you need to be clean everything you do needs to be clean in order to get the best final finish even coming down to masking up the car making sure that there's no possible air that can get underneath the car and well, kick up some dust along the way. These are all steps that need to be taken in order to get that beautiful factory finish that we all desire. And well, if you just hang tight, you'll see exactly how we did it here. So now you have a little bit more appreciation of all the hard work that goes into the job. Remember, consistency is a part of the game. Every job you do is not exactly the same. Now, what I'm gonna teach you now is I'm gonna show you how do you get a great clear coat finish. It doesn't start with laying down the clear coat. It starts with every single phase before that. Let's go to the drawing board and let me show you what I mean. So let's mimic our actual finish we have on an OEM panel. This is orange peel. See, it's not perfectly flat. That's when you come in on a blend panel, let's say, and you're flattening it out 100%. After you flatten it out, we're starting off good. You see how nice and smooth that is? Our base coat will now go on that nice and smooth. Let's say you did not lay down your base smooth because you are spraying with the wrong reducer, you're not being clean, you're not washing the car, you're not doing everything I'm telling you to do. Your base coat, well, it looks like this again, all these little bumps and everything just like that. What happens when you spray your clear? Your clear is only going to show you what your base coat looks like. A lot of guys will say, Brian, my clear coat comes out dirty. Well, guess what? Your base coat was dirty. Can you imagine if your base coat went down relatively smooth because you're clean, you're using the right reducers, it's going on smooth. Well, your clear coat is gonna go on smooth as well. And that is what you need to understand. A clear coat finish happens way before, a good clear coat finish happens way before it comes to spraying clear. Let's hop in the booth and let me show you how I lay down some base. Do you see how nice and flat and even that 800 grit completely leveled off we've already cleaned the panel we've washed down this whole car we are ready to get our base on right before our clear base and our base coat we'll use a neutralizer and a tack rag to make sure any lasting debris that is still on the panel 
gets wiped off. Now I like to use a blending clear or a clear base. This gives a visual aid to show me exactly what is going on with the base. Is it blending? And the reason why I like it is because it gives the panel the same sheen as the base coat, that same kind of semi to matte gloss finish. And it shows me, is it blending out? Do I need more coats? Is it modeled? And that's exactly what it's doing. And also it fills in minor little scratches here and there. It is not a sealer, but it's your last aid before moving on to base. So what I'll do here is I have a little couple cut throughs. You don't need to seal these up. I'm just gonna apply my first coat very, very light. I'm not getting too much into it. This is the Walcom base coat gun 1.2, one of the base, best base coat guns I've ever used. I tell you, it is effortlessly. I've got around five to 10 minutes in between coats. Allow that base coat to really flash. Here in the second coat, we're extending a little bit further. We're also making sure that we're going past that line in the panel and the fender and the door, making sure we extend to that first body line in the hood, using this as our cutoff point. Now in our third coat, again, five to 10 minutes later, we're gonna extend it a little bit further, maybe three to four inches past our original area. Using a extra slow reducer, this base coat blends flawlessly and effortlessly into the existing paint. It is no issue when using the right material. Using the right material in a base will yield a better finish in your clear coat. This is what it should look like. Very simple, extra slow reducer. Do you see how smooth this panel is? This panel is ready to accept clear. It's nice and flat, okay? What do we wanna do? Let's let it dry another good 10 to 15 minutes. It's already been drying about 10. You want all the solvents out of the paint. Remember, variables you can control. Do them to ensure yourself a better job. Let's go in and talk about fluid tip sizes. Generally, there's three tip sizes for clear coat. There's a 1.2, there's a 1.3, and a 1.4. Let me show you what the difference is and let me tell you how each one affects your clear coat. A 1.2 diameter, obviously won't look that small. A little bit bigger for the 1.3, a little bit bigger for the 1.4. What's happening here? Well, the 1.4 is obviously lose, letting out more fluid, okay? So a lot more fluid is coming out of this 1.4, okay? Fine. 1.3, there's a little bit less fluid. And 1.2, there's even less fluid. What this means is the air has to work harder on which one of these to produce a finer, smooth finish. Which one do you think it is? Well, if there's more fluid coming out of the 1.4, that means that the air has to work harder to produce a finer finish. What makes a nice and smooth OEM finish? We don't want dead flat, we want OEM texture. What makes it OEM finish is your air to fluid ratio, 1.3. What's gonna happen here? Well, your air has a better chance. So let's say the droplets are this big, all right? Big droplets for 1.4, okay? Big droplets, they don't come together, okay? Smaller droplets do. 1.3, smaller droplets, okay? These smaller droplets, start to come together, okay? They will bond better, they will get together, they'll be great friends and create a smoother finish. What happens with the 1.2? 1.2, you have even smaller droplets, okay? Look at the 1.2 and look at the 1.4 droplets. What's happening here? The 1.2 droplets are so small that when they get together, since they're tiny, tiny little droplets, they create a smooth finish rather than a little bit bumpy, rather than really bumpy, okay? Now, this doesn't mean that you can't use a 1.4 or 1.3, but a 1.2 will atomize the paint better. It will put on thinner, wetter coats because the paint is going on smoother. Now, what's the downside to a 1.2? It's a little bit slower. What do you want? A slower, fit, a, a slower time to paint the car? or a better finish. Let me show you the gun we're gonna be using. We'll be using the LPH 400. Now, I like the one with the orange cap because it takes it a step further 
and it breaks up the clear. Now, the orange cap is actually made for base coat, but hey, we're breaking rules here, and everyone knows that that orange cap really works well with our clear coat finishes as well. So we're gonna get it all outfitted, get it ready to go, and head into the booth. Now we'll be using our uh, diaphragm regulator. This holds the pressure much better than your regular valves. Uh, this is why I like it. So that's it right there. And uh, it just attaches really easy. It's a little bit more bulky, but I'll tell you, it holds the pressure very consistent. You don't get that sudden burst of air coming out every time you go to uh, pull the trigger. Here's how I set up the gun. Pull the trigger, back this out all the way before it comes out. Turn it in to the right, okay, clockwise until it stops and you have resistance. You see the trigger move? That's why we know we're wide open. I'm gonna go one turn in from wide open fan. We're gonna go wide open to the left and we're gonna turn it in on this particular gun about a quarter of a turn. This gun runs at low PSI. I'll be spraying between maybe 23 to 27 PSI. Around that range, I'm watching what the droplets do. We're using either 1.2 or 1.3, whichever fits your spraying uh, technique or pattern. Another question I know you're gonna ask, do I tack it? Limit the contact you have with your panel. I do one tacking before base, one after base. We're using our neutralizer once again. Take a look, that's all we have. Three coats and that's only overspray we have. More overspray means sand piling, a buildup of the metallic, a dirty, crusty, ugly finish is what you're gonna get with that. Show you how easy this should glide on the surface. Your tack rag should not be getting stuck. It should move freely. It should not be like you're going over sandpaper, okay? It should move nice and free around the panel. This is an indication that you have a good finish. Let's say it's bumpy. Get yourself a thousand grit, go over the surface, and then give it two more coats and it'll be much smoother. It's time to clear. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the confidence, this car and this clear or anything you're doing, it's gonna kick your butt. So make sure you have done all the steps prior, all the variables that you can control. Clean out your spray gun and make sure yourself is clean. Wipe yourself down, wipe down the car. We're ready to spray clear. I'm gonna show you what the droplets look like and what they should be doing. When I spray this panel, I do not want to build up on this edge. Fat, ugly edge, we all hate that. So I'm gonna make sure I'm coming past it, okay? Coming past it, never stop at the edge. If you do, then you're just wasting, you're putting piling on the clear, and that clear has nowhere else to go but to build up on that edge. Look at what the clear is telling us. Look at our edge. Now, I like to stop on my first coat right around here. Clear will build up and darken this color. This door is already modeled from factory. It looks ugly, ugly, ugly. So make sure on your first coat on a metallic, you take it to around here. Now, take a look. I have a little dry spot there. I'm not too concerned with that. Second coat, I will get that, tie it all together. I'm not concerned with some spots that might be a little fuzzy. But do you see the droplets? Do you see how smooth they are, okay? We want about a 75 to 80% overlap on our side panels and in our hood, we can go even greater from 85 to 90. Because it is a flat panel, we can really lay it on a little bit heavier. When spraying your first coat of clear, I like to follow around 75% overlap. Remember, it's a lot easier to get a run out of a second coat than it is the first coat. If you get a run in the first coat, it's going to be pretty, pretty tough because you still got to put that second coat over it. As I move across the hood, what I'm doing is I'm increasing my overlap to around 85 to 90%. I'm really pounding it on because on a flat surface, you can do that. Now, on this particular gun, I like to make little adjustments. I like to watch the clear. If I don't like what it's doing, then I'm going to change things up exactly what I'm spraying. I don't like the way it's coming out. It needs to be a little bit wetter. So I'm going to dial it out a little bit and I'm going to bring this up my pressure. I'm going to raise it up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to start to lay it on. Basically the adjustment I just made there is to allow more fluid. 
more clear coat to come onto the panel. Now, when I do this, I need to increase the pressure just a little bit to make sure that it's still atomizing, it's still breaking up those droplets. Before, if you don't have enough material coming out like I did on that first pass on the hood, then you're gonna get some orange peel that way. So keep that in mind that orange peel has a lot, a lot of different variables and reasons why it might happen. It's control of gun, it's the amount of fluid coming out, it's air pressure, it's your temperature, there's so many variables. My biggest advice, first coat, do not get overwhelmed. Just get the clear on. A little bit fuzzy here and there. I'm not worried. I know my second coat. We're only doing two coats. Anything more will get you into trouble sometimes. So we are ready to allow this to flash. Give it time, 10 minutes to 15. Allow solvents to come out. We don't want to trap it. If solvents are still releasing, we put that second coat on top, we sandwich it. Let me show you that. Some of you are in way too much of a rush. You need to use slow. If you are at least 80 degrees and above, please use slow hardener. Wait the time. If you use fast, let me show you what fast is gonna do, okay? Fast hardener, you just sprayed, right? Your, your clear coat finish. It's releasing, okay? All your solvents are coming out of the paint. If you use fast in the wrong environment, all right, 80 degrees and above, that top coat starts to harden. And where do all these little dots go? They come to the surface and they look like little pinholes, what we call solvent pop. My friends, that is where your issues are. Terrible twos, too fast hardener, too much material, okay, piling on the clear coat, and too soon, not allowing your clear coat to dry. Let's back up and let's look at what happens with slow. You just laid down your clear coat. You're using the proper hardener. Look at your tech sheet. You're waiting 10 to 15 minutes if you're using a regular clear or less, depending on your tech sheet, maybe five to 10, okay? Whatever your tech sheet says. Your little solvents are releasing, okay? They're coming to the air. What happens? They eventually go away. They're out, they're gone. And this is what happens. Your first coat of clear is waiting for the second to go on top and it goes on and it looks beautiful because you controlled a variable that you can control. Let's pop into that booth for the second coat, let's go. So we allow the clear to flash off. All that solvents have gone into the air and now it's ready to accept the second coat of clear coat. Now, how do you know when your second coat is other than following the flash time? You can look at or feel the backside of a piece of tape, that tackiness. I like to compare that, that same tackiness that a piece of masking tape will have on the backside. It's the same tackiness that your clear should have. So feel it, see if it's similar. I don't like when it's stringy. Some guys do like when it's stringy. I don't think it's ready when it's stringy. So moving along to here, you can see how I'm overlapping about six inches past that gap. Those different areas are different areas where your clear is gonna wanna run. Still following around 75 to 80% overlap on those side panels. But this time, what am I doing differently? I am watching the clear even more closely. On that first coat, I'm just getting the clear on. Now this is my final coat. So I wanna make sure that all the coats and all the passes I'm doing are coming out just the way I want them to. I don't wanna have to come back and spot in some clear. Let's say you have to come back and spot in some clear a couple minutes after you've done this pass. Well, what's gonna happen is the area that you spot in is gonna look nice and shiny and the areas around are gonna be fuzzy because they're not gonna melt in enough. This was a very hot day in a booth around 100 degrees and it's very, very hard to get a good finish. If it had been around 75 to 80 degrees, which I consider really good spraying temperature, then what I would have to do is move a lot faster. What you need to do as the painter is you need to recognize what is the 
paint doing? And you need to make adjustments from there. So let's say it was a lot cooler. Well, what I would be doing is I would be moving a lot faster because that paint would be flowing out. On a hot day like this, you have to watch what the paint is doing. So me watching what the paint is doing is telling me, Brian, you need to slow down because what is happening here, you're getting some dry spray, some overspray, or Brian, if that happens, you need to get closer to the panel. Maybe you need to move a little bit quicker. You want the meat of that spray pattern to hit the panel. The meat is around four to five inches depending on the paint gun. Let's say this was a SADA. Well, that would be pumping on the material a lot quicker, so I would have to move a lot faster. This is an LPH 400. It's a very, very slow gun, but the reason why I like it is because it's very user friendly. It doesn't pump on a whole lot of material, and well, it puts it on like glass with very, very minimal effort, and that's exactly what we see right here, a beautiful glossy OEM finish. Just finished laying down two beautiful coats. Now, my job is to not deceive you. Although it does look absolutely stunning, there is always going to be maybe a couple little debris or nibs here and there. Leave them. We got a smooth finish. We will get them tomorrow once it's fully cured. Next morning, let's check it out. After the bake and after drying, it still looks really, really good. Let's get it unmasked and let's get this thing back together. got the car all assembled and it's looking just like it did when it rolled off the showroom floor. Now there was just a little bit of buffing on the hood. We did a little bit of sanding and buffing on the door as well just to make sure that we had a nice beautiful smooth finish and we love the way it came out. Guys if you learned something you want to support the channel head over to paintsocietystore.com. Also don't forget check us out on Instagram paint.society. Guys this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you don't overthink it it's just paint. Let's check it out.